player gets kicked out of a playoff that, game. That's why this is important, Rachel. Look, we know that in the playoffs, there are going to be individual calls that are going to upset people each way, and there's going to be fines. Here's what we don't want to see. We don't want to see a guy getting thrown out of game five when it's 2-2. No, sir. We don't want to see a player get his seventh technical in the conference finals. No, sir. Get suspended for a game because he got involved in some altercations with the officials in the first round. And that's what I'm worried about. There's going to be good officiating. There's going to be controversial officiating. Ejections are up this year. Ejections are way up over the last two years. Player technicals are up about 5% this year. I'm worried about something causing major controversy. Do you the expect the refs to pull back a little in the they playoffs? Ha they have play? to because now we're talking about meaningful games, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, regular season, just move on to the next one. I mean, there's nothing really on the line at stake. Now we're talking about these guys advancing their plan for a championship, right? And the intensity, the testosterone is going to be, the level is going to be raised high. And these guys are going to be so intense and, you know, they, they're going to be into it because they are playing for something. And I think they have to pull back a little bit. Now, you can't be out there disrespecting the referees. You know, you just can't do that um, and, and, you know, put your team in a bad situation. So, yeah, hopefully they can, you know, have some slack, give these guys some slack a little bit. I understand, obviously, when you blatantly break a rule, you have to get called on it. And when the game is losing control, right, you want to keep these – because it's important, too, that a playoff game does not turn into a crazy brawl or anything like that. But some of these calls through the year, and you talked about this in your story, are about larger relationship building. Hey, you can't talk to me like that. I'm a new ref. This is why I make a statement. I'm a younger player. I want to make a statement. That stuff, that should not be involved in playoff right. games. Save that for the regular season. You want to make a point – about like the larger way that you should be treated on either side, that's for the regular season. The playoffs should just be about what's going on in that game. I want to move on to the Warriors, locked into the number two seed in the West. Uh, take a look here. There, there's four different potential opponents that Golden State has to prepare for. Spurs, Wolves, Nuggets, and Pelicans. And this was so interesting to me, and we're talking about this for the rest of the segment for a couple different teams. So the Warriors got blown out last night. <clears throat> but here's the time. important thing that the <laughs> Warriors course. did by losing that game. By losing that game, they guaranteed that they would not have to face the Jazz in the first round of the playoffs. They love Salt Lake Steph City, Curry. too. The nightlife. Um, and they guaranteed themselves by losing that game that they would not have to face the Thunder. Uh -huh. And Kevin Durant would not have to walk onto the court in Oklahoma City. And boy, did they lose it, Rachel. Without <laughs> Russell Westbrook. <laughs> with, with Russell Westbrook looking at him without Steph Curry. So, yes, we can talk about this game and whether the Warriors should be worried and Warriors fans should be worried and all of that stuff. But I'm not sure they want to to lose this game, right? Well, either way, I don't think they were going to face the Thunder anyway. Thunder was going to... Uh, there was a permutation. They, no, the Thunder was not... They, they couldn't sustain the seventh spot either way. It doesn't. It didn't well, matter. If they lost to Memphis, although maybe that, no, that's No, because a San Antonio and uh, the Pelicans play each other tonight, so mm. they, there's no way they could have sustained that seventh You're, spot. You, you could go blind on these per permutations. The only person that's got me focused here is, Steph, is uh, Steve Kerr. Because Steve Kerr has been sounding alarms for a long time now. And he got, he got a little bit exasperated within the last week when he said his players didn't care. And you could tell that hit some bone because he had to walk it back. Steve doesn't usually have to do that. Um, they're 7-10 and 10 down the stretch. Steve has been talking about since training camp how this team has had focus issues. I believe that they're going to be okay. I believe when Steph comes back that... They're going to hit their stride again, and I still say they're going to be in the finals, and they're the favorite for the champions. Yeah. But Steve knows the team a lot better than I do, and Steve's a little bit worried, and that makes me a little bit worried. Uh, yeah, I think they should be worried because what I'm watching, I'm not watching the same team uh, if, there's, if Steph is on his team. I'm not watching a system now. Now I'm watching individual offense. KD is not relying on the system to help him get uh, efficient shots um, easier shots. It's all. It's a lot of isolation, and that's not how this team is built. Um, defensively, they haven't looked the same. So, I mean, if Steph doesn't come back, you know, in this first round, a lot of pressure is relying on KD to elevate this team. And I just don't know if you could turn that switch on like that, especially when you play in some of these hungry teams. Minnesota, if you get in the playoff, Denver, you get in the playoff, these guys are hungry. 
right? And they're going to play with a lot of energy. Can you match that? And let's see if they can get back to efficient play. I am worried if Steph Curry doesn't come back as quickly as, as we think he probably will, at least by the second round. I am worried if Steph Curry doesn't come back to be 100% of the player he is. We've seen he's come back in the past and then not quite been himself. Worked. And he might be get the rolls an ankle or something like that. I'm worried about all of that for them. I'm not really worried about what Steve Kerr's been saying, because that's Steve Kerr's job. I guess. To say all this stuff. I and, guess. And, but and he, I mean, kno Rachel, he knows about this kind of stuff. He but does, but that's his role. His role. And he's played this on this team before, so she's about, well, I'm going to... I'm, I'm still buying job. Warrior he's doing his stock. Job well. I'm still buying exactly. Warrior stock. I want to talk about the Bucks because again, this comes back to, are you trying to win or... Ah, are you trying to this lose? is an interesting one. This is a good one, right. So they play the Sixers tonight. If they win, they are likely the they sixth, will be the sixth seed. seed. Right. So if they win, they become the six. And the Cavs. Play. The Cavs become the three with the Sixers loss. And that means that the Bucks face LeBron James and the Cavaliers in the first round, which is not usually what you want if you're a team in the Eastern Conference. But if they do purposely lose, they then they also could lose their pick. They, they, would, they would have to, they, in likelihood, would give their pick up. If they win, they get to keep their pick up. not round. a top ten pick. It's a top 20 pick. It's a top 20 pick. It's not okay. a top 10 pick. But that, is that a... So this is from the York Bledsoe trade? Yes. And it was a protected pick. And top if they 16. lose tonight, that means that they... If they lose tonight on purpose to avoid the Cavaliers in the first round, they will likely lose Listen the pick here. because of where they finish. It's the last regular season game. Giannis, Jabari Parker, Middleton. Hey, you guys... Take a break. You know, we're getting ready for Saturday or <laughs> Sunday. But there's another factor here. Well, another please factor. tell me that factor because right now, I mean, you I'm looking at, I, like I, I do not want to face LeBron James right. in well, the first Well, round. first off, Tracy, the Sixers have won 15 in a row. They're playing at home. They're playing for something important. I in three seed. That, but I think the Sixers are going to win anyway. But having said that, this is, they have, they have cleared Giannis to play from his ankle injury. Matthew Della Vadova is back. And tonight will be the first time in 82 games the Bucks will have their entire roster this season. And so the Bucks want to try to use this game as a final preparation for the Man, playoffs. Man, whatever. I'm I mean, with Tracy. I think listen. they can use that to prepare all they want Absolutely. until the five-minute mark and then let the Sixers Look, you win. You got crazy. That sets up Forget your... that pick is not top ten. You got I crazy think, I assets think the on your team anyway. that you could trade away. I think away. the Sixers are winning anyway, but they could have sat Giannis, and Giannis is going to play. Here's what the jump recommends today. Mark Spears of the Undefeated has been doing these great diaries with Vince Carter all season. And the latest one, Tracy's cousin Vince says, next season, he's coming back. It's time. It's been a great, maybe two more years. This is, by the way, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm hacking up Mark Spears' quote, but he's basically saying he's definitely going to play next season. He's saying maybe it's time to retire after that, but then he says maybe not. You see, he's getting paid, Trace. Not I wouldn't bad, retire bro. either, baby. Not at all.